Hello and good morning. This is Dr. Jerry Cuomo. I am here with my patient, uh, Victoria, and we're going to do tooth number, uh, I believe it's tooth number five today. It's a bicuspid, and I want to just show you how we assemble um, our rubber dam today as we get ready to start with this tooth. So I'll try to video record as much as I can. Um, I am going to use a small Young's frame and I think we're right around five um, five inches in, in uh, width and length. So it's a small frame. Um, I'll just reverse the side so it's, it's a metal frame. And I try to get these things ready before I go in. So I'm using the outside of the frame. Of course, the, the round portion here has a little elbow bend in it and that goes with the chin. So the chin's underneath here. And uh, for upper right, we're going to punch. I usually punch about three holes, and I try to stretch the dam to get a window in there. We're taking an old crown off. I really just don't want all the, f the filings to go in, down in the mouth and down into the food tube. So first things first, I'll just go ahead and take my uh, hole punch. So we'll just start in the middle, and I'm going to go a little bit to the right. I'll just punch one. Then go ahead and punch another one, and then one more. So we have a trough, basically. Yeah. All right, then we're going to add a lubricant to the other side of it. And it just helps facilitate the, uh, the placement of the rubber dam. So that's on the inside, and this is the outside. So we're going to use the now go get our clamp and our clamp holder. So I keep everything in a nice convenient box and I just label it rubber dam retainers and uh, you know always say put, please put away the proper uh, in, a, in its proper space. That's so important. So we label all the bins and we're going to pick this one. It's the 27N uh, just double checking on that. Yeah, it should say 27N on it. All right, for upper molar, we'll go around that tooth and then we'll actually uh, use this as our tether. So the first thing we're going to do is apply a little um, topical anesthetic to the roof of her mouth in that area that we don't normally numb is the palate. So I'm going to go ahead and get my clamp holder and my clamp ready. And I'm going to go ahead and apply the um, the material. Gray mirror, please. All right. So here we are. Open for me. And uh, have you open up a little bit wider? Great. And we'll just paint this side. This is the lingual. So I'm just going to put a small bend and the uh, micro brush. Just so she doesn't feel any part of the clamp in that area. All right, here's number five. That's the crown we're going to replace. Okay. Great. I'm going to just set the balance on my microscope. Take a second to do that. This one has an automatic white balance setting mechanism on it. Just hold up a uh, white sheet of paper, push a button, and it automatically sets the color for us. This felt like it might have been a little. There we go. That's better. I want to make sure we see blue is blue, red is red. Okay. Put my lens cover back on. And go ahead and place our clamp. Just going to tip you down a little bit. Okay. And open. Okay, so I got one side the clamp, and then always kind of touch base. There we go. You okay? Mm -hmm. Still okay? 
And we'll let go. Everything good? Yep. Okay. Slive ejector, lower left, please. There's our clamp. Now we're going to put on a napkin, a rubber dam napkin is going to go on next. And then here's our dam. You okay? Okay. And we're just going to stretch it. And I'm going to have you hold this. There you go. And I'm just going to stretch it around the back and then we'll tether it with some floss. I'm going to tether it to the to the cuspid. And times the lubricant. There we go. Let me have my mirror. Okay. Great. So we'll pull it forward. Drop her down a little bit. Alright. What we'll do is just slide the floss in between those two teeth right there. Mesial the cuspid. Alright, leave it in there. Got it in? Just leave it right there. Hold that. Great. Okay, I just put a double loop through there like so, and that tether usually it's good enough. All right. Okay. All right. Transferring. So here's our tooth. We're going to go ahead and uh, first thing I'm going to do is use a diamond. I want to go through the porcelain first. So first things first. I use a flame tip diamond. And I'm going to bring it right out up to 8 power. So here we go. Make sure I'm in sync. There we go. S ready for suction. So what I'm going to do is just literally just outline. Cut a trough. Are you okay, Victoria? start and you notice it's pretty shallow where the metal is so it's had a lot of wear and tear on this crown old metal ceramic coming off and we'll just place that initial trough in there Tracked a little bit more. Turn a little bit. You can see how that tip is already worn. I have a fine diamond, please. Suction, please. So we're going to kind of go in and get rid of this contact area. I don't want any pressure. There's a veneer next door, and I really don't want to put any pressure on it. A little air on the mirror, please. So it's a little slow process, but I'm really taking my time. I don't want to cause any issues with the adjacent veneer.
Okay, I like to break the contact. And turn to your left. Thank you. Okay. So we're staying on the side of the crown. Suction only. And just getting really close. You see how there's metal in the contact area. So I'm going on the side of the metal. I like the fine diamond, less vibration. Takes a little longer, but I can get in there better. Dry the mirror. Good. Again, just take your time. Now I'm going to take care of the distal contact area there on the mirror again. We're going to give you a new tip. And you see how I'm running right into metal again. Now, say, say you didn't uh, do this in the contact area, air in the mirror. You'd put so much force when you're separating on the adjacent teeth, you could probably break that veneer, and that's what you don't want to do. You got an all ceramic crown right next door to it. You got to take care of that one as well. So. Um, I just feel like you have to you have to get rid of the interproximal. If you're going to spread and remove a crown, you know, get rid of get rid of the ceramic aspect in between the teeth. If you can do it. Okay. And deviate it a little bit. All right, we'll go to fresh burr. So there we have it, we're, we're separated, you know, just so about a half a millimeter is all I need. Okay, so now I'll take a 330 burr, air on the mirror. And I'll just prep through that. Now, using a microscope, I can actually prep because everything is blocked. So you got to prep just to the cement line. You okay? Mm -hmm. Once we remove the um, 
the old crown. We're going to go ahead and place our retraction cord. So that's the next step is making sure you got your cord ready. Now she's sensitive to epinephrine, so we have to use something that does not contain epinephrine, as well as the anesthetic. We use Sitnest and um, Carbocaine. I gave her one carpule of each, so she's doing pretty well. So far, so good, right, Victoria? Mm -hmm. Good. All right, so you can see probably the old cements were like vitromir. Air in the mirror? She might even have an old amalgam underneath there. Looks like she does right there. Looks like an old amalgam. Now, the lingual is left, so I can now take an instrument and just kind of go back and forth in here. Dry the tooth. And now I'm just going to go ahead and just gently just see if it'll give, you know. There we go. See, now it's coming nice and easy. And look at, as I move it, I'm putting no pressure on the adjacent teeth. So they almost touch. Now I'm just going to grab that with my finger. And take it out. All right, so now we're looking right in there, and when I was right, there's amalgam in there, there's decay underneath, and if you look inside the crown, you're going to see a lot of business going on in there, a lot of stuff, including that of washout. I mean, this is a composite cement, but look at the gingiva. You know, we could say a few things. Look at, look at all the bacteria that's percolated in there. Uh, use a retraction core before you cement a case. You don't want any moisture at the gum line when you put it in. Where does all the micro leak leakage occur? It occurs right at the margin. So that's evidence enough, and you see where it's least is up around the occlusal aspect. Now the thickness of this old crown, if we measure with the uh, uh, periodontal probe, you're going to find out that you're, you know, about a millimeter in, in thickness. So we need to go at least a millimeter and a half, if not two. But look at the buckle. Over-reduced, you're at three millimeters. And the ling will under-reduce. So that's our pre-op before we go in there now. All right. So we're going to go ahead and rinse that first and get all that off. And we'll also use um, a concepsis. Okay. Concepsis. And we have this loaded in a pre-comp syringe. Um, it's got a little brush on the end of it. Go right on the tooth with suction, please. Right on the tooth. Right on the tooth. Ah, that's it. Make sure you're open and close these up all the way. Okay, put your fingers right there. You okay underneath? So one of the amalgam cores just, just left us. It just got sucked down. So imagine if we didn't have the rubber dam on, you know, this patient would be experiencing all this. Alright, so we know we have to reduce more of the central groove area. All right, so here comes some more water. Siltrax, braided cord, comes with and without epi. This one doesn't have any in it. Okay. Okay. What I like to do is I just use the blunt end of, of an Explorer, purposely uh, round off the end. Use it as you're packing. What am I finding? I'm finding that she's got a pretty decent biotype here, and I have room to prepare um, vertically. So if I want to now, I can take it down a little bit, either at the crest of the of the of the tissue or a little bit below it. And approximately, plenty of room there, and there's no reason to end my margin way way. I want to be above the gum line, but I don't need to be way way above it. 
Now, I might use the scissors not only to trim this, but I'm also going to trim a little bit of that piece of floss out of there because that might be in my way. All right, so there we go. Suction, please, lingually. Loss. Suction again, lingually. I can. I don't want to cut the dam if I can avoid it. Excuse me. All right, we're good. This is, um, there's a segment on one of my videos on veneers, and um, I give a, uh, a little PowerPoint talk about this particular case, so you can look for that. That's one of the earlier YouTube videos. So let's get rid of the rest of the amalgam, all right, and some of this core material. Hopefully that's perfect as far as focus. Let's increase our focus now to about 8 power and go ahead and get the rest out. Basically just teasing it out. You okay? You feeling a little bit? All right, we're going to stop for anesthetic. Um, be right back at you with the second half of this. Dr. Jerry Cuomo in my Boca Raton office. And having a happy Halloween today. Take care. See you in a little bit.